Good morning everyone. Um, it's pretty early. It's uh, quarter past nine Saturday morning. Uh, first off, this is uh, already the um, updated May sponsor list. And that's the website I have for the paint and stuff for uh, people in Europe. Um, I was, I'm going to do a uh, push and pull with Vallejo paint like I promised. And I'm going to show you the um, the uh, the thing I'm varnishing. I forgot to get it, so now here it is. So this is the first layer, and as you can see, it is totally, totally smooth. Like I said, the little bits where you could see the. Um, the silicone still coming through after three times cleaning. Um, it's totally gone now and that's why I'm, I'm doing this absolutely with uh, gloves on because in between you don't want to touch this with um, your bare hands because you will have oil on your fingers. You know, it's just something you have on your hands and that'll disrupt it. So first off I'm going to do my second layer. and. I have to get a new brush because what I did yesterday, I hate myself sometimes. I put the brush away and I forgot to clean it. I think I, I did get it back, but you know, it's laying outside in the sun and it's drying. So uh, here is a, uh, another a brush. Now, what I'd like to discuss also, and this, this is important for people that do a lot of varnishing. Let me see where I have that little thing. Oh no, that's outside. Now, I have this uh, comb and I use it for my dog, you know, to check if he has fleas. And what I do is I also do my brushes with it because right now when I do this look at what it's releasing and that's the thing that if you do a lot of varnishing because I'm sure you're not gonna buy new brushes for every single time you varnish and uh, there is some sort of stuff that gets in there and sometimes you don't even see it but it's really really small but as you can see there's stuff coming out of this brush and you don't want that in your varnish layer. So what I do is I take one of these combs and I comb through these hairs and it releases the uh, buildup on those strands of synthetic fiber. And that way you're pretty sure that you're not going to get it in, the, uh, in your varnishing layer. It's just those little things, you know, that help sometimes. So shaking up the, uh, the varnish and just like yesterday, I put on a layer. This is a little less than yesterday because I want to first get my brush all soaked, as you can see, both sides. And the first layer, you can do a lot of stuff, you know, that doesn't work on the first layer. You can have some gaps, you can have some... Uh, little strokes in there but the second the third the fourth those layers you want to be really really secure with those layers because that's important so as you can see I'm doing all all uh, all directions that's what I start off with the top when I have a, a little one that is. And now I'm going to do the sides. There's not enough on there for the sides, so I'm going to put a little on. That's when I do it on the brush. When I've done the uh, top is all nice and smooth. Some people will start with the sides and then do the top. That's okay. But this is just what I'm used to. That's the second one. And somehow when I do these videos, I always have a feeling that I have to do that really fast. <laughs> but 
but I know guys you know you don't need me to do it fast so um, that's that one and now this one and the corners you want nice corners that's that now I do w one more on the top I give it a couple of drops because I just want it a little uh, thicker as you can see all the drops are on there then I just go over it like this and then I'm sure that I have had every single one I do the sides again and I look at it from this way and as you can see I hold the brush you know it's only the weight of the brush that is brushing on the uh, on the varnish now as you can see this will all flatten out because that's the way this varnish works but as you can see it's building up it has a nice sheen to it it's very glossy um, I have some um, some glitter in here uh, it's not really picking up the light but it's really um, you can see right through it. it it has a resin look to it so that's what I'm going for and this is layer number two and I will do after this one I'm gonna do one more layer and I think I'm there because I just look if everything is you know just as translucent here as it is there and if it's not I will put on another layer but I think with three layers we're gonna be there right now I shouldn't forget to wash this brush later. Oh, I can dump it in a bucket. Okie dokie, let's get to the pour. Now, I have a nice little 15 by 15. I have a brush because I'm going to put a layer of um, white on the back. And what I have is, again, these are all Vallejos, like I said, because I've never done a push and pull with Vallejo paint. So what I have in here is uh, the uh, titanium white. That's the background color. It has only Vallejo paint, Floetrol, tiny bit of pouring medium. I'm talking tiny, like maybe 5 to 10%. And it has no silicone because we're going to use this as the background color. Now the background color, if you put silicone in there and you go over it with a brush, like I'm going to do now, you can see that it is totally smooth. And if you use a brush to do this and you have silicone in it, you will get that pitting that a lot of people uh, talk about or dents or whatever you want to call it because that's what the silicone does. But I am going to make sure that the whole thing is covered in a nice background layer. Because we, maybe we don't want to tilt too much. You never know. Because once you release that paint with your little cup, with the push and pull, sometimes you get some really beautiful effects. And you don't want to do too much more to the, uh, to the paint. So uh, that's why I do this. But for the same, it might be that you don't like it, you have to tilt a lot, but that doesn't matter because you can go either way when you do this. So we've got those little folds in the canvas done. That's important too, yep. Okay, one more time. Nice thick layer of background color. Now, putting that away. Now we're gonna fill up the little cup for the push in the pull. And what I like to use is, this time I'm going to be using um, all blues and turquoises. And after this I'm going to be doing one under pressure with the same colors, just to see what different effects we're going to get. I'm going to pour this in from really up high so it really does something to all the, uh, all the layers of the paint. Okay. Now, we have this ready, background color, take the little thingy, plop it on there, see that? Nice and easy. 
Don't be afraid, just put it on there. And now I'm going to uh, put a little paint all around it, like that. And we're going to do a little pushing and pulling. That's about it. Now, there's a lot of paint under the white, as you can see, and that's why we call it the push and the pull. But I would like a lot of this to level out. Oh, I kind of like that, really. Let's see. I want to torch it right now because this is going to sell. Wow, look at that. That is really, really cool. That is a lot of cells. Now, now I'm see. Now we don't want to really tilt it anymore because we're going to disrupt all these cells. So um, the thing to do is just leave it as is. Let it dry. There's some nice cells going over the side. This is uh, okay. Maybe I could really flatten this out a little bit. That's it. I want to do a couple of things to it, but I, on the other hand, I don't want to do too much to it. Because I'm pretty sure if I'm going to tilt this, this will disrupt all these cells. And I really like this side, what it's doing here. And I like what it's doing here. So let's just leave it. Yeah, we'll see how it flattens out. If it doesn't flatten out like uh, I want it to, I can always do an, a little bit of white on the on the corners because that's all it is. There's a little bit that I'd like to add. Maybe let's do it right now. Because you can see just a little um, a little dent, and maybe that's not that appealing when you ooh got a little blue in there. Doesn't matter. Okay, that looks a little bit better. That's it. Now this up here, yeah, I really need some because I can see uh, I can see a little bit of the canvas popping through. That's it. This will smooth out. I'm pretty sure about it. That's it. We'll just let it dry and let it do its thing. It's it's a lot different from uh, the Windsor and Newton that you know just sells up and stays that way uh, because this is all Floetrol and Floetrol is a sort of a flow release. You will see that this will move more. It'll do stuff to even this, the middle part. But I like the colors and I like how it came out, so we're gonna keep it like this. And on the other hand, I'm thinking, why don't I do something to the middle? <laughs> yeah. Oh, choices we have to make. And yeah, I would really like something white coming down here. What do you guys think? I know some are saying, don't touch it, leave it like it is. Hmm, I think I will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to do that. I, I just want to do that. So what I have is just a normal uh, household spoon, met, met, uh, metal. And um, I'm going to put a little paint up here. And I'm going to pull it down with my uh, spoon. See how that's going to work. We'll see. And I can always ruin it, right? So something like this, but that's a little bit too thick. That's going to work, but this isn't going to work. You can see that when your um, top layer is too thick, there's no way those cells are going to go through it because of the thickness of the, uh, the top layer.
think that that it needed it yeah it needed a little bit that down the middle there a couple of cells so the rest I'm gonna leave this is okay that is okay this is it I'm gonna leave it just as this is and um, I'm, I will show you the, uh, the the how it sells so I'm putting this away right now or no I'll give you a little close-up See that bit in the middle? It really needed that. Okay, let's get you back in focus there. Okay. Now, I want to show you the, uh, the cell power of this mixture. So I'm putting on a little bit of the colors a little bit of dark blue in the middle maybe up here a little dark we want some contrast okay then my trusty little palette knife I'm gonna push it all up like that and pull it right down like that That was it. So with the squishes, I always hold my torch up really high and let the warmth come down. Then they sort of grow a little bit bigger if you do that. So this is, um, for me, this is a nice little piece, especially this middle, uh, this bit in the middle. I really like that. So uh, I think we did well today. Yes. Now I'm going to um, do the under pressure thing. I got the canvas ready, so I'll be back in a flash. Well, I'll just make the video and post them both. But I have um, a 20 by 20, which I will first um, cover with a little bit of this, uh, the background color. And then I'll put these colors, the blues, I'm going to put those in a piece of plastic. I'm going to turn it, put it under pressure, and we'll see if it reacts like the last one I did. Um, it will be different because, like I said, this is Vallejo fluid with uh, Floetrol and a tiny bit of pouring medium. And the other one was a totally different mix. So, interesting, right? Yeah. So, I love you all to pieces, guys. And I will see you back in a second.